So, hi everyone. Hi and welcome to this um, uh, TOEFL lesson for the uh, integrated uh, writing section. So, and I'm gonna, yeah, checking my vo volume there. Okay, so um, just making sure if you are just joining us and getting the alerts that we're starting. So I'm gonna leave a comment here. Let us know where you are from. Um, let us know if you have joined these other live sessions, and also let me know when you're um, when you plan to take your exam. So this will be. Um, so I'll leave a comment here. So let us know where you are from. Attended before and when you plan to take your exam, and. Uh, what are your target scores as well? So, okay, yeah, so let us know in the chat, say hi, let us know where you're from, and uh, let me get that. You may um, also, if the image on the, the camera there is not the best, I would recommend on the, the little uh, gear icon, if you can click for the uh, quality, raise that up to like 720, um, the HD, uh, so you can get like a better, a better image there. Um, I think my camera is still kind of having a problem focusing. It should be doing that automatically there. But, uh, just going to raise see on here. Let's see if I can make this higher. Okay. Yeah, that should be a little clearer now. Yeah, I'm just raising um the uh, the quality for the bandwidth. Okay. So um yeah, let us know. Okay. So we're just waiting for a few more people to join, and then we'll get started. So I might have to refresh the page for a second to see if there's any comments. Okay, I see Alexander, uh, Alexandra from Moscow. So welcome, Privyet. Um, and uh, yes, hello, Nastya from Moscow. So Privyet. Okay, so um, so in the previous uh, lesson. Um, we started looking at the integrated uh, writing task. So uh, we're going to continue with that, and we're going to look a little bit more in terms of giving you feedback on some samples that I've received from students. I have about six samples that I've received. I'm also going to show you one of my own writing samples that, um, that I put together for, for this um, particular exercise. And... Um, also, we're going to look at some techniques, things like paraphrasing, things that will help you with your organization, um, and also with the proofreading, um, some typical mistakes that I see, and some typical mistakes that I saw in these specific examples, and ways that you can kind of improve that. Um, so, uh, for if if you did not get a chance to see the um, the webinar um, last week. Um, basically, we were talking about what this this task is, that we have a, um, a short reading passage. Um, and the reading passage, it's an academic text. 
uh, there's usually some kind of a process or a concept or some some explanation about something and there's usually about like three points that are made in the reading passage uh, and most likely in the lecture the the audio that you listen to with a professor talking for about two or three minutes um, that's going to contradict information that is provided in the reading passage and then your task is to um, write about 150 to 225 words. That's basically what ETS recommends um, in uh, 20 minutes. Uh, so um, you don't have a long time to put together your notes and an outline. Um, you have to get started rather quickly um, and get basically like an introduction, body paragraphs, and a very brief conclusion on this. You don't really need a conclusion on there, but um, a lot more of your development would be in the um, uh, um, the uh, body paragraphs. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, I see somebody. Oh, hello, Alexei. Um, that you have just sent your essay a few minutes ago. Um, unfortunately, the the presentation here is kind of. Um, I put this together yesterday, so um, I, if if we have extra time, I can see if I can include um, a link to it or, or, or read through it. But I might have to give you that feedback after we're live. Um, I, I I'll check I'll check my messages to see if I receive that. But um, but the examples that I have here that I've included in the presentation, um, I received those like maybe like a week or two ago. So I've been processing those. Okay. Um, this is Alexei Maria. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll I'll ch I'll, I'll check uh, for that. Okay. Um, what else on here? So, um, we're for those of you who were not necessarily here, we're going to look at this question again. This text. Um, I'll read it briefly, and then you can listen to the lecture again. That we were all kind of on the same page with uh, with this particular task. Okay, so I'm going to show you my uh, my screen here, and please let me know um, that you can see it in a second when I switch here. And again, um, double check the the little icon there on YouTube to raise the quality because they will automatically set it um, usually at the lowest default uh, for the pixels and, and the um, uh, on there. So you might not. Um, raise this as high as you can to like the um, 720 or or um, or higher. Um, I think 720 is the highest that they have there. So that that'll make sure that you can see the screen and the content on the screen um, correctly. Okay, so I'm going to share that screen now. Okay, so so let me just make sure you can see on here. So please let, leave me a message that says you can see the screen. Should say TOEFL lesson number nine, integrated writing. Please let me know. Can see very clear. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. So, OK, great. OK, so um, for those of you who may not necessarily know me, um, my name is Jonathan. I've been teaching. I've been learning languages for a long time now. Um, I got started with Spanish and French in high school um, back in the mid 90s. And then I was also learning German, some Italian, some Russian. Um, I've been learning Russian for a couple of years now. So I do speak um, Russian. So if you are a Russian speaker and you do contact me and you do want some help, ya gavaryu paruski. Um, uh, and I've been teaching languages uh, since uh, 1999. I'm going to zoom in here. I think the screen is a little is not as zoomed in. Hopefully, this will be a little better. Okay. Um, yeah, because I can see it kind of a little small on the screen. So I've zoomed in here. It should be about 100 percent there. Okay. Um, yeah, I've been teaching languages um, since about 99. I've been teaching ESL, English as a second language, foreign language. In the United States, um, I lived in France for about six years in Paris, um, and I taught in elementary schools and, and businesses. 
Um, I had um, uh, students from all different language levels and language backgrounds. Um, and since 2008, I've been living in uh, Mexico City, uh, the capital of Mexico, and I've been also teaching online uh, as well. And now, principally, uh, I've been uh, training more and more students for the uh, TOEFL exam. And uh, personally, I took the exam myself, and I scored a 117 a month ago, and that was um, 28 on reading, a 29 on listening, a 30 on speaking, and a 30 on writing. So I'm really confident about the advice and the tips that we're going to be looking at in this presentation. Uh, they helped me uh, get a great score on the writing section, and they've been helping a lot of students as well with the organization and the um, kind of the content that they put into their their essays and um, the way they kind of um, go about their writing as well. Okay, um, and I say and I see here, hello, Elena. So hi, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's great that you're here. So thanks for joining us. Okay. So let's get into this webinar here. So here is the reading passage that we looked at last time. I'm going to read it briefly. I'll just read it out loud. So it might still look a little small on the screen. Um, I'll see if I can zoom in just a little bit more for this slide. Um, not too much so that you get all the content on here. Um, OK, so I think that is as close as I can zoom in on there. OK, so this, this text, you would normally have three minutes to read this. Um, if you were here last time, this should be the same similar text. And you'll see it does take up half the screen. And you have about like 10, 12 words per line. Um, you don't ha really have a lot of spaces. That's basically the way you're going to see these texts for the integrated writing for this reading section and also on the reading section when you take the test. It's going to be a similar experience for reading this. You don't have much white space. Um, however, here for the writing, you have the white space because you'll be writing a text on that side of the screen. But I'll just get into the readings here. Okay. So altruism is a type of behavior in which an animal sacrifices its own interest for that of another animal or group of animals. Altruism is the opposite of selfishness. Individuals performing altruistic acts gain nothing for themselves. Examples of altruism abound both among humans and among other mammals. Unselfish acts among humans range from the sharing of food with strangers to the donation of body organs to family members and even to strangers. Such acts are altruistic in that they benefit another, yet provide little reward to the one performing the act. In fact, many species of animals appear willing to sacrifice food or even their life to assist other members of their group. The meerkat, which is a mammal that dwells in burrows in grassland areas of Africa, is often cited as an example. In groups of meerkats, an individual acts as a sentinel, standing guard and looking out for predators, while the others hunt for food or eat food they have obtained. If the sentinel meerkat sees a predator, such as a hawk, approaching the group, it gives an alarm cry, alerting the other meerkats to run and seek shelter. By standing guard, the sentinel meerkat gains nothing. It goes without food while the others eat, and it places itself in grave danger. After it issues an alarm, it has to flee alone which might make it more at risk to a predator. Since animals in groups are often able to work together to fend off a predator, so the altruistic sentinel behavior helps ensure the survival of other members of the meerkats group. OK, so that's the reading passage uh, for this particular exercise. Now, um, I'm going to play you the lecture, and I'm also going to provide you uh, the transcript. So that'll be a little bit easier so we can be on the, kind of the same page here. Um, OK, so here is the lecture. I'm going to turn on my audio and play you the audio file here. Now listen to part of a lecture on the topic you just read about. You know, often in science, new findings force us to re-examine earlier beliefs and assumptions. And a recent study of meerkats is having exactly this effect. The study examined the meerkat's behavior quite closely, much more closely than had ever been done before. And some interesting things were found, like about eating habits. It showed that typically meerkats eat before they stand guard. 
So the one standing guard had a full stomach. And the study also found that since the sentinel is the first to see a predator coming, it's the most likely to escape because it often stands guard near a burrow, so it can run immediately into the burrow after giving the alarm. The other meerkats, the ones scattered about looking for food, are actually in greater danger. And in fact, other studies have suggested that when an animal creates an alarm, the alarm call might cause the other group members either to gather together or else to move about very quickly. Behaviors that might actually draw the predator's attention away from the caller, increasing that animal's own chances of survival. And what about people? What about some human acts that might be considered altruistic? Let's take an extreme case. Um, suppose a person donates a kidney to a relative or even to a complete stranger. A selfless act, right? But doesn't the donor receive appreciation and approval from the stranger and from society? Doesn't the donor gain an increased sense of self-worth? Couldn't such non-material rewards be considered very valuable to some people? Now you will see a question that asks the test taker to summarize the points made in the lecture and to explain how they cast doubt on points made in the reading passage. If this were an actual TOEFL IBT test, you would have 20 minutes to write your response. Okay, so that is the kind of two minute or so um, presentation, uh, the, the lecture uh, that you have and the transcript that I gave you so you could follow on along today a little bit easier. You would not normally see that transcript. Uh, it's just for the sake of this presentation to make sure that everybody kind of understands all the content. Um, so now it's uh, typically they say an effective response to this task is about 150 to 225 words. I would write more than that. Um, that would give you a better guarantee that you're going to be able to present a lot of this information on there. Um, and this particular question is going to say, summarize the points made in the lecture you just heard, being sure to specifically explain how they cast doubt on points made in the reading. So now let's take a look at some of like some notes that I took on this. So the notes that I have from the reading passage say that, okay, altruism, uh, this is when like a member sacrifices itself for another animal or group. It's the antonym, it's the opposite of selfishness. Uh, the, 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 this person gains nothing or the animal gains nothing. The examples might be um, sharing food, uh, donating body organs, um, it benefits other people, and the person gets little reward in exchange. Uh, examples could also be sacrificing food or life to assist another member. Um, the example that's given here is the meerkat, the sentinel, that stands guard. It looks out for predators while the other animals are hunting. It makes an alarm. It goes without food. It puts itself in danger. Uh, it's at risk from a predator because it usually has to escape alone and it ensures the survival of other members. So those are my notes that I took from the reading passage. Realize that um, on the test, you, you will be able to see that reading passage while you are writing your essay. So your, your notes don't have to be uh, exhaustive and very detailed because you will still be able to see the text. Um, it's not quite like um, with, uh, um, the questions number three and four on the speaking section, where as soon as you have like the 50 seconds or five, 45 seconds for the reading passage, it disappears and you never see it again. Um, here on the integrated writing, you do see that text um, while you're working on your essay. So that's uh, one concern I hear from a lot of students wondering if like how how much notes do you have to take? Uh, how many, no many notes um, do you have to take on this reading passage? Um, I would just take um, some of the key points and the main points. That way I can kind of go uh, back and forth when I'm listening to the lecture and be able to kind of circle or indicate, oh, this point is contradicted in the reading or in, uh, contradicted in the lecture. So I can kind of identify which points are being 
contradicted when I'm listening to the lecture. Because when I'm listening to the lecture, I can't see the reading passage. So that's why note taking is a good idea for this. It's just that you don't have to have complete notes, but some of the main ideas. That way, when you're listening to the lecture, you can identify uh, what are some of these main differences on there. OK, so my next uh, slide is showing some of my notes from the lecture, which are that there was a behavioral study. Uh, they looked at the eating habits of the meerkats, and that, in fact, they ate before standing guard. So this uh, meerkat had a full stomach. So that is an actual uh, direct contradiction here. The reading passage said that they go without food um, before standing guard. And here in the lecture, they say they actually eat before standing guard, so they have a full stomach. Next, uh, the lecture says that the this animal is the first to see a predator, and it, thus it's the first to ex escape into the burrow after it makes the alarm call. Because and in the reading passage, it says the uh, once it makes the alarm cry, it runs off alone and it's in danger. So that's another point that it's a contradiction. Also, it says um, in the lecture, the meerkat, uh, the meerkats that are in the field uh, are actually at, in gray, uh, greater risk because after the alarm, uh, they either gather together or they scatter and move around. Um, and in the reading passage, it says that they can like fend off and work together uh, fend off a predator, um, but actually, um, so this alarm cry does not necessarily um, guarantee the safety of the group of meerkats. Um, and actually, the uh, tension is moved away from the caller, but the tension is moved towards these meerkats that are in the field, which is, again, this direct opposite between uh, those two. Finally, the lecture talks about um, when people donate organs uh, and saying that uh, it, they do actually get something. They get a reward um, in the sense of appreciation from the donor recipient, uh, or they get approval from society, and they get an inc increased sense of uh, self-worth. So those are my notes from the lecture. Now if I put them kind of side by side, you can see here how when the sentinel stands guard, um, it's it's near the burrow entrance. So uh, where it says that they gain nothing, well, actually, it has the ability to escape quickly and into the burrow. Uh, the reading passage says they go without food. The lecture says, no, they have a full stomach. Uh, the reading passage says that um, sentinel places itself in danger, but actually it places others at risk. Uh, because it draws attention to the others and not itself. Uh, the reading passage says the other meerkats could work together, but actually in this case they would be scattered around or moving um, and not necessarily able to um, defend themselves. And lastly, um, in the example of the humans, saying that there's little reward, there's actually the lecture says they get the reward in, front, in the form of appreciation, approval, and self-worth. So I have my two or three main points here about um, the difference between the reading passage and the lecture. So um, let's take an example, look at a writing um, that, uh, and a template that you could use here, which is basically starting with a topic. So the lecture, the professor discusses altruism. The main idea of the lecture, okay, the professor argues that um, uh, like the meerkats and humans are actually not altruistic. Uh, their actions are um, for their own self-benefit. Um, however, the author contends that um, meerkats and humans get little reward and they sacrifice themselves. So uh, the professor's lecture cast out on the reading. Um, and um, so I'll get into the next paragraph, like saying, OK, the first point is that. And then it, I'll say, according to the professor, so um, the meerkat actually has a full stomach when it goes on duty. However, the reading states that the sentinel goes without food. Um, so, uh, so this point made by the professor cast doubt on the altruistic behavior of the meerkat because it actually does have a benefit. So that could be one way I could go into the first paragraph. 
And then I could do the same thing again, um, saying that the second point uh, and relating this to that the Meerkat uh, Sentinel kind of, uh, once it makes an alarm call uh, or a cry, uh, what happens? And that the professor says it actually escapes into the burrow uh, to safety. Whereas in the reading passage, the author says that it runs off alone. So that's um, the so the point made the professor again. It's casting doubt on that point and then contradicting it. Uh, so then I'll get into the third point and say that um, the last point is that um, the professor says that um, organ donors do actually receive um, rewards in the form of appreciation, approval, and an increased self, um, sense of self-worth. However, the reading states that they get little reward um, and that it's a selfless, selfless act. And finally, yes, again, this is casting doubt. So in conclusion, the points made by the professor contrast with the points made in the reading passage. And basically, to summarize this, they, they demonstrate that these points are in doubt. So that would be taking this kind of a template and some of these key phrases that you could use in there. So um, let's take a look at like a full essay that I've done here. So, um, so uh, when I did the test a month ago, um, I did get a probably a word count of around 470. So I did actually kind of double that 150 to 225. So I was able to get a lot of content in here. Um, I do recognize that as a native speaker and as a teacher, I probably do have an unfair advantage, but I would say that if you can provide more content, you're able to get a more developed answer um, and to show the relationship between the lecture and the passage. So um, I'll try to zoom in here. So, um, so both the lecture and the reading passage discuss the concept of altruism, which refers to selfless acts performed by people and animals to benefit others and such altruistic actions often receive little benefit or reward in return. The professor um, cast doubt on points made in the reading passage by citing new evidence based on a recent behavioral study of meerkats, an animal used as an example by the author of the reading passage. The first point made in the reading passage is that sentinel meerkats, um, group members who act as guards to watch out for predators, perform such duties without eating. Uh, the premise that they do not eat would suggest that this is a clear example of altruism. However, the professor dismisses this claim and cites observations made in the new behavioral study that the sentinels actually eat before standing guard and in fact have a full stomach. Such proof demonstrates that sentinels are not at all performing a selfless act as suggested by the reading passage. So here I've clearly demonstrated uh, what the professor says and what was in the reading section. And I've been using a variety of words like claim, cite, uh, premise, dismiss, um, and proof, and demonstrate, so and suggest. So I'm trying to use a lot of um, synonyms in here and trying to clearly show, um, and also using some of the words like however, um, and, and showing these contrasting ideas, and in fact, um, and not at all. So these are some phrases that I'm using in here. So the next section here. Secondly, the author contends that sentinel meerkats place themselves in grave danger by making an alarm call when they see a predator because it would draw attention to itself instead of other meerkats that may be scattered outside of the burrow hunting for food. The author states that those meerkats would be able to work together to defend themselves from an attack from a predator. On the contrary, the professor casts doubt on this point and states that as the sentinel stands close to the entrance of the burrow, it is the first to escape after alerting other meerkats of a predator. Additionally, the professor says that the alarm may cause the other meerkats to group together or to move frantically about, which would draw attention away from the guard and place those meerkats in more danger. Thus, the guard does not perform a selfless act and in fact guarantees its own survival over that of its fellow members. So once again, I'm clearly showing the contrast and the contradiction between 
what the author states and what the professor says. Um, and I'm using phrases like cast out, um, state, uh, contend. Um, I'm using phrases like on the contrary, um, some additionally, uh, thus. So I'm using these like bridging phrases and um, transition words to really show the relationship between these ideas and really kind of make the link as clear as possible um, to see what happens and how this is like complete opposites. Okay. And lastly, uh, lastly, the reading passage refers to selfless acts performed by people in the form of sharing food or donating organs with little reward for doing so. However, the professor questions whether such people actually receive nothing in exchange for their actions because they most, most likely receive appreciation for donor recipients and approval from society. Additionally, the professor suggests that a donor's own sense of self-worth most likely increases as a result. Basically, donors feel good about themselves and that would indicate that their acts are not altruistic. In conclusion, the points made in the reading passage that both humans and animals perform selfless acts is called into question by the professor who demonstrates that the performers do in fact gain benefits, rewards, and increased chances of survival. By doing so, it can be said that they are not altruistic at all. So those are the points that I'm trying to make in this, um, in this text. Um, so again, I have linking words lastly, however, Basically, additionally, um, in conclusion, um, and I'm trying to, again, use more synonyms, things like call into question, um, points made, um, uh, refer to. Uh, so I'm, I'm using a lot of um, variety in my, in my vocabulary. I'm using different structures with, um, like using which, using whether, um, linking a lot of these sentences and using uh, relative pronouns. So this is a lot of um, good ways to show a variety with your vocabulary, a variety with your grammar, and also to clearly show the linking of these ideas um, on there. Okay, so let's get into some student examples here. Okay, so this is one example from another one of the students. So, okay. Uh, one of the examples in the lecture was from Animal World, where meerkats illustrate an example of animal altruism by standing guard, while other members of meerkat society search for food. It was previously believed that the guard endanger itself to protect others, but in fact, he has a higher chances to escape and don't have to search for food. The most common example of human altruism is a donation of organs to relatives or unknowns. However, in the lecture, the assumption was made that the true motivation of people who donate organs is to acquire other people admiration. This contradicts with a common pattern of altruistic behavior, which is believed to content no selfish interest. To summarize, the lecture is confronting the classic approach to altruism which assumes that there might be no self-interest in motivation of the altruistic person. Although the lecturer does not deny the existence of altruistic behavior, audience attention is drawn on the fact that the, our perception of altruism is wrong and the definition of this term should be reconsidered as no. Thanks to studies and thinkers, we know much more of what is the underlying cause of altruistic acts. Okay, um, so my, my first comments uh, my first observations with this essay is that there's very little um, development about the meerkats. Um, it talks about, in the first sentence there, saying that the meerkats illustrate an example of animal altruism by standing guard while other members of meerkats society search for food, uh, and that the, uh, the guard endangers itself. Um, it has higher chances to escape and don't have to search for food. Uh, those those points are a bit that they're not clearly stated of how they kind of there's no mention about the fact that they're that, that the guard has a full stomach um, so that that's a key point uh, between the reading passage and the lecture that um, the reading passage says um, 
the guard doesn't have doesn't eat before it stands guard and he, and here it doesn't mention that with the professor in the lecture um this is more of a little bit this looks a little bit more like a uh independent essay in terms of like what is altruism and um how is it kind of perceived whereas this one is more like this integrated essay should be more factual it should be based on the facts that are presented in the reading passage and in the lecture so um there are also some uh grammatical and vocabulary mistakes that we're going to look at a little bit more detail um as we compare a, a couple more of these essays but this this lecture unfortunately or sorry this essay unfortunately misses a couple key points um, from the lecture and the reading. So this would probably get a lower score on there. It would feel a bit incomplete. Also, it's just one big long paragraph. I don't see uh, the organization here. I don't see a, an introduction, a body paragraph, and a conclusion. So it's really important that you include um, uh, those kind of structural organizational details in your writing really make sure that you're using paragraphs to separate the content that'll make it easier for the examiner to uh, read your um, essay um, what else on here is um, some of the details in here are, are a bit vague um, they're not fully developed and i don't quite um, see yeah, these specific details about how they're contradicting each other. Okay, um, let's move on here to another example. This is another example from this, another student. Okay, so here we do have an organization. There's an introduction, there's a first body paragraph, and a second one, and a short conclusion. Okay. So the topic of both of the judging materials is that animals and people can be altruists. Altruism is a type of behavior when animals sacrifice their personal interests for another animal or a group of them. The same happens with people. Both of them share food, and as for people, they can donate organs. However, the main idea in reading part is opposite to the main idea in listening. Uh, firstly, the reading says that meerkats are staying in guard while the rest of the group is eating. Guardians protect the group from predators by this way. However, in the audio, we could hear that before standing in guard, the meerkats eat first to have strengths for keeping an eye on the environment while the rest of the group is eating. When they notice predators, they alarm to the group, and after, the, after that, they are the first who run away immediately. So this point means meerkats who stand in guard have the advantage, and it's not a big sacrifice for them. Uh, secondly, the author in the reading section talks about people who share food and donate kidneys, for instance. However, in listening, it's worth mentioning the fact that donors are rewarded, and when they donate, they get gain from society. In conclusion, the listening cast out the ideas of the author in reading section. Okay, um, so this does have a little bit of the visual organization, but um, some of the main information is missing. So, um, it, for example, here with the, the fact that the, the guard eats first and then um, and goes on, on duty, on guard, that is mostly clear in this uh, body paragraph. But the, the part about the alarm to the group and running away is not as clear as it is in the, in the lecture where the, the professor says that um, this, this guard will immediately run into the burrow. Uh, the reading passage states that it would run away alone, so that information is not clearly demonstrated here. Um, the, what else on here? Um, also the fact that it, it's putting, the alarm call actually puts the other members at risk more than itself that point is not developed here so that's kind of missing from this this development um the the second paragraph about the people and the donors um it doesn't really go into the detail about like what kind of award in terms of appreciation or approval or the sense of self-worth so that that 
when it says they are awarded, that's a bit vague. It's not fully developed in terms of what was covered in the lecture. Um, so this, this does get some of the points from the lecture and the reading, but it doesn't um, go into enough detail and it doesn't get enough of the main points. It gets maybe like two points out of the three. It misses the one about the alarm claw like in detail, okay? But um, this is a little bit better than the previous one because it does have some of the structure there. So it does have um, an introduction, body, another body, and a conclusion. So that's, that's getting a step forward. Um, so let's take a look at another example. Okay. Um, the lecture and reading passages are about altruism. The reading passage cites an example of the altruistic behavior of Meerkat who acts as a guard or sentinel of a group. In contrast, the professor explains how recent findings cast doubts um, on previous beliefs uh, about altruism in a group of, of that type of mammals using, as an example, meerkat's uh, eating habits. The professor's first point is that meerkat has the safest position by acting as a guard or sentinel. It eats before and has a chance to escape first of his group into a burrow where he, when he sees a predator. However, the reading passage mentions that Sentinel gains nothing by alerting other species and goes without any food and puts itself in a greater danger. The second point of the lecture is that after alarming, Meerkat's group flee together and might gain even more attention from the predator. And that is the reason why Sentinel has higher chances to survive. On the other hand, the passage states that Guard is in a bigger risk because it should run alone, while others run together and seek a shelter. Finally, the professor supports new findings with rhetoric questions concerning altruism as a selfish act by itself, although the reading passage claims that altruism is on the other side of selfishness because altruists gain nothing for themselves. Okay, so this this uh, essay is um, has even more uh, details in here. Um, there's also these bridging words like in contrast, um, however, uh, on the other hand, finally, so the, those things help me a little bit more with the organization, with this essay. Um, also, this is doing a good job of citing uh, the reading passage and the professor. So that is mostly correct. Um, there is uh, maybe in the second part here, it is, it is pointing out the lecture. So this information is mostly coming from the lecture and it does state that the passage states this. So whenever possible, you really want to make sure that your information is clearly identified of where it's coming from. So if it's coming from the reading passage or it's coming from the lecture. Um, uh, so you do, this essay does get the two points about the, uh, the, the guard and whether it eats um, and puts itself in danger and also about the the alarm cry so that that is developed that is correct however in the final section here it it does seem to be missing information about um like a donor with the organ uh, the kidneys and saying that um the approval and um uh sense of self-worth and the uh uh, approval from society and the appreciation, it didn't really mention those details in here. So this is kind of incomplete. It does get like two of those main points and it does have a lot of organization. Um, this probably would still get a higher score, but it would be incomplete. It wouldn't get the highest score on there. Okay, um, moving on. Okay, uh, this example number four. So this topic describes this type of behavior as altruism. Altruism is the opposite of selfishness. It is the actions that do not require remuneration. Examples of altruism abound both among humans and among other mammals. For example, the African meerkats. When they hunt, they leave one meerkat on guard so he can warn of danger by its cry. We are introduced to two points of view. In the first case, it says that the altruism in people's behavior is to share food with a stranger or the needy or be someone's donor without demanding remuneration and that the meerkats stand guard while the others eat and cry and gives you a chance to escape and survive others. However, he put himself in danger more than others. A second opinion, the first fully provengal, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, it says about scientific research, they proved that actually the meerkat who stands guard is already full and to escape, he's uh, better off than the rest because the hawk 
hunts in a pack. What about the people? They have their benefits in being a donor. For example, the remuneration of or the rating companies or the satisfaction of their own ego. Uh, what about me? I believe in altruism from people because I personally know such people. Even if the behavior of the meerkats is not an example of altruism, then how about mammal mothers and the cubs? Okay. Um, my first point would be this last conclusion, like this, what about me, I believe in. So it you really want to avoid putting your personal opinion into this essay. Uh, this integrated essay uh, is only information that's from the reading passage and the lecture. So there's no personal opinion and there's no external information in the form of something that you read in a Wikipedia article or something you heard on TV. So anything that's external, that's not included in the reading passage or the lecture, it does not go in this essay. And certainly um, a personal opinion uh, is not to be included in here. So that's my first observation here. Um, this does have some structure. It does have an introduction. It does have the body paragraphs. However, the, the points are a bit vague. Um, they're not fully, fully developed. Um, uh, for example, the with with the donor, it does say like, okay, there's well remuneration, but remuneration sounds like money, and it says the rating companies. I don't. There wasn't any mention about companies, so I'm not sure what that is. There is okay satisfaction of their own ego. Yeah, that could be a way to say that they're increased self worth. That's true. Um, the 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 points made about the meerkat standing guard are very brief and not as like fully developed. I don't see the information about. Um, oh no no yeah I do see that in the second paragraph. Okay the 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 stands guard is already full, so that full stomach. Okay they do make that point, but it's not quite as clear the relationship between the reading passage and the lecture with regard to the fact that the, the meerkat eats or doesn't or has a full stomach. So that, that seems to be separated. Um, uh, I'm looking at the introduction and the other paragraph as well. Um, it's, yeah, stands guard, stands guard while the others eat. I don't quite see the point that it didn't have food. So that, that's not clearly established, the relationship between those two points. Um, so that, that can be a little confusing. So as a reader, I have to skip around to connect, connect the dots, and that should be the, the writer, the test taker, who is connecting that information as clearly as possible for me. So this, I might get a little confused, the relationship between some of those points. It, it feels underdeveloped here. It does have a, the word count, it does have over the 225, but it's not as fully developed. Uh, Okay, here is another example. Uh, okay, both materials discusses the subject of altruistic and selfish behavior of humans and animals. The author gives an interpretation of altruism that makes that, that, that marks as a selfless act of one to another without having any profits from the action and moreover with potential loss to oneself. Selfishness means any acts actions doing by humans or mammals to their surroundings seem to have an individual profit. The lecture bases on the latest scientific research and state selfishness is the only possible way to behave. Yeah. The article builds on the examples that people can give food to strangers for free or even saving people's lives, whether it is their relatives or unknown persons by sacrificing of their organs, which are possible to transplant. The lecturer claims that even in such extreme cases, humans benefit from any way despite not being paid for that, hinting at non-material rewards measured by mental attitude and cultural traditions as an inner power or social praise. Uh, finally, the reading uh, uncovers the information of meerkats performing related to their eating ritual. They tend to have a patrol that observes the field in case of appearing predators and make an alarm call for the group if it comes. In fact, the altruistic behavior is that the sentinel is unable to hunt for food or eat it before the others have staffed and put itself at dangerous risk, making an alarm call, an alarm cry, drawing the predator's attention so its fellows could immediately run to the shelter. The lecturer 
refers to the newest findings that says the patrol cards close to a burrow and can disappears into it. Its alarm provokes a bustle among the group that most predictably attracts the predator's attention to the moving meerkats than to the hungry guard. Okay. Um, this feels still a bit incomplete. Um, there is a lot of what could be part of a independent essay, kind of like the uh, discussion of what altruism is. Um, I would make a lot of that a little bit more briefer. Um, so I get into the facts of how the reading and the lecture contradict each other. Um, so they do reference the, the difference here between how humans do get benefits like mental attitude, cultural traditions, inner power. I would make that those references more clear uh, because the lecture itself says appreciation from a donor, approval from society, and increased sense of self-worth. So I could see how social praise could be understood there as kind of social approval. Um, but inner power and cultural traditions, that could be a little vague. I, and mental attitude, I wouldn't quite, that wouldn't be as clear as it was stated in the lecture. Um, the, the, the details about the meerkats, um, it is true that they have a full stomach. Um, and, uh, and also the, the detail about the alarm call. The, the cry there. Um, but some of these ideas uh, are not as clearly stated um, as the difference between the, the lecture and the, the reading. So um, I would still continue to like simplify some of these uh, ideas, um, stick to the main important points that are made in here. Okay. And uh, one last example is this one. Okay. The lecture is about altruism and how it is reviewed by the scientists exploring the nature and can be treated in people's society. Firstly, the author gives the definition of altruism and elaborates it with description and examples taken from animals such as sentinel meerkats that guard the group against the risk of being found or attacked by the predators and human beings that can help by sharing of food with strangers or being a donor of organs to another person, being a family member or a stranger. However, in speaking part of the lecture, the author casts some doubt on the reading part of the assignment, saying that sentinel meerkats are standing and guarding the group against the predators, stand at the entrance of the burrows, and uh, they can escape fast whenever they find the danger approaching. Meanwhile, other members in the group can be endangered at that moment. And people's altruism is doubted as well whether they are not seeking the appreciation of their altruistic act, either material materially or in the form of having an admission of their self-significance in the society. Talking about human altruism, I believe that it can be two sides of the medal. On one hand, the altruists help others without any evident reward as it may seem at first sight. On the other hand, it can be in 90% cases, the selfishness of these altruists that seek the self-worth and self-significance to be fortified by the society or at least by the people they rescued. And this reward from the rescued people does not imply the material benefits. It implies the emotional dependence in eternal gratitude inside every person they saved. It might be dangerous. Anyway, I seek to hope that people will be altruistic to everyone without focusing on any reward, thinking about karma. Okay. Once again, I would make the comment that uh, this last paragraph about what this person believes, that I believe and I seek, um, that personal opinion is not to be included at all in this essay. That, that kind of development would be in an independent essay, but not an integrated one. Um, this person's writing style is more developed. Um, however, uh, the, the, the points that are between the lecture and the reading are not fully developed. Um, for example, that the, uh, that the, the, the sentinel has a full stomach or not, or that it can escape um, at the burrow. Yeah, it, it says that it, it can entrance at the burrow and can escape fast, but it doesn't quite show that contrast between what is said in the lecture and the reading, um, and also putting the other members in danger. It doesn't quite show clearly how the lecture and the reading passage uh, contradict each other. Um, it does mention how human people um, do have a sense of like self-significance, so that it does mention that. 
but it doesn't go into the full details to to really clearly show how the lecture and the reading passage um, contradict each other. So those, um, like it does have a longer word count, but I would say this last paragraph is off topic. It's, it's, it, sh it should not include a personal opinion. Um, and uh, the first paragraph, the, the first development looked good. It looked like a good start, but the second body paragraph where it starts with however, it really should have been separated to go point by point to show the difference between the reading passage and the lecture. Okay, so these are some examples that I've received from you um, who have been attending these uh, webinars. And I thank all of you very much for sending me those examples so they could kind of look at um, the style, the writing style, see some of the things to include and observations here. So um, more now um, that I would say for how to work on um, improving this would be, for example, in the proofreading skills, one of the things is subject verb agreement. So this would be, for example, uh, where is the letter S? So this would be, um, for example, with English, like third person singular or the third person plural. So we'd have this, this is like a, 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 um, a game or a, something on a playground called a seesaw. And you can usually just have something on one side or the other. So uh, I like to look at this for like the letter S, that there should be an S on students. Students think that or teachers believe that or the professor says that or the author states that. So realize that if you, if you, if you don't have an S, there's a problem. If you have too many S's, that's also a problem. So you need to have an S, like one of them, it should be either on the subject, uh, when it would be plural, or the S should probably be on the verb, and then in this case, the subject would be singular. So that's one thing here to double check in the few minutes before you finish uh, your writing, double check some of these subject verb agreements. Um, next, uh, here are some examples of this. Um, I'm going to zoom out slightly uh, on here. Okay, so um, here's the example. Both materials discusses the subject of altruistic and selfish behavior of humans and animals. So here we have too many S's. So it should probably be uh, both materials discuss. So I would I would get rid of this ES on there. The next example, however, he put himself. So there we're missing an S on put, he puts himself. Um, and then the last sentence, he has a higher chances to escape and don't have to search for food. So this should be doesn't have. So those are some examples there for the like subject and verb um, to double check that if you can before your last few minutes, before you um, finish your, your exam. Um, articles. This is quite common as a problem for Russian speakers because you don't have these articles in Russian. Um, the professor's first point is that meerkat, so it would be the meerkat, has the safest position by acting as a guard or sentinel. Here the a uh, guard is correct. Um, and that is the reason why sentinel, so it should be the sentinel, has higher chances to survive. So this is correct chances without an article, that's correct but this one does require a the. Um, on the other hand, the passage states that guard, so this should be the guard, is in a bigger risk. So the a uh, bigger risk is correct because it should run alone while others run together and seek a shelter. This expression should be seek shelter without a. And lastly, he has a higher chances. Well, chances is plural and you should not have a there. So you want to double check that of singular a, uh, but this is plural, so that's kind of a contradictory there. So you need to make sure that your articles are correctly used. Um, they are minor mistakes, and as long as they don't affect the understanding of your message, they, they, it's okay. It's not a big, big mistake. But if you can avoid them, that's better because there's a sense of accumulation if you have too many mistakes that can lower your writing score. Um, next, um, for example, some tenses, 
for example here, um, firstly, the reading says that meerkats are staying in guard while the rest of the group is eating. Um, sentinel meerkats are standing and guarding the group against the predators. In this kind of a situation where we're speaking in general terms, we use the present tense. Um, another thing that comes up often in this integrated writing is whether you should use your verbs like state, um, say, um, discuss, whether you should put those verbs in present tense or past tense. I would say you could leave them in present tense because um, some of those verbs might be irregular. And if you don't remember the irregular past tense, you might um, accidentally make a mistake. So it's probably easier to just leave all those verbs, like say, state, discuss, um, leave them in the present tense. But just be kind of consistent um, with your with, with those tenses. Okay. So you may want to review some of these uh, grammatical points, like present tense, uh, present simple, present continuous, uh, on there. Okay. Um, another example here: Don't use contractions. A, as an academic text, you should use full words. So these are examples of like, uh, to escape, he's better off. So this should probably be um, to escape, he is better off. We saw this example before, don't have to search. This should be does not have to search. And the last example, however, in listening, it is worth mentioning. So um, avoid using contractions in your academic text. Um, you, sh you should be using full words uh, on there. Um, next, I already mentioned this before, but don't uh, include a personal opinion. No references to I, we, or you. So what about me? I believe in, or personally, I believe, I personally know, or I believe that, or I seek, or our perception, or we know. So uh, do not include any reference to a personal opinion um, and don't use any statements that have I or you or we uh, in an integrated essay. This should only include information from the reading passage and the lecture. It should all basically be in third person. So lastly, what to remember, um, take lots of notes on the reading passage and the lecture. Um, organize your notes to make it easy to identify the contrasting points. Make sure you clearly cite your sources, um, whether you compare contrast the author and the professor or the reading passage in the lecture. Just be consistent how you're doing that. Um, clearly show how the points contradict each other or cast doubt. Um, use a variety of these reporting verbs like state, claim, assert, say, contend. Um, and um, uh, use many connecting transition words to link ideas um, and allocate three to five minutes to provide to proofread and check for errors. Um, so this is an overview of what you should include in the integrated essay. So um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here for a second. And um, so I'll come back onto the screen. And um, thank you, everyone who has been um, uh, watching here today for this essay. I really appreciate um, you, you watching the, the entire hour here or so. Um, if you have any questions um, about uh, the integrated essay, I'll be happy to answer your questions here. So um, thank you. Thank you uh, for attending. I hope you have found um, this presentation helpful, um, and um, please uh, let me know um, if you have questions or comments. I'll be happy to uh, comment um, and to answer your questions. So, if there's no questions for now, um, then um, then we'll be wrapping this up here. And I would say um, next week. We will be looking at um, the um, independent essay. So uh, that will be, um, uh, I will contact a few of you who, who are very generous to share integrated essay examples. I'll see if some of you would also like to contribute um, 
for an independent essay. And again, we'll try to have the same question. That way we can see how other people's like writing styles uh, kind of uh, differ and contrast and, and what are some of the best practices of what worked, what didn't, and um, how to uh, develop your independent essay. So, um, so thank you, thank you once again, all of you who have uh, joined here today. So, Marina, Elena, Roma, uh, Dennis, um, Maria, um, Nastia, and and uh, Alexander. So, thank you for for joining today, and um, I'm I'm glad you found this uh, lesson to be useful and to to take a look at the uh, these errors and examples. Um, I could keep going further with this development, but usually that would be more um, specific uh, per student. Um, and usually this would be spent for like an entire um, lesson going through essays and looking at maybe line by line, what are some grammatical points, what are some details. So I would give even more personal feedback in a lesson with students. So definitely I would recommend um, checking out if you would like personal independent um, or personal uh, individual lessons. There's a button um, about the, um, excuse my Russian, um, yeah, you can click there. Um, and also if you click there, there's a sec there's a option to ask me a question. So if you want to send me an email, go ahead um, to do that. Um, I'll be happy to give you feedback, especially those of you who have been um, attending these um, live uh, webinars. So thank you once again for um, attending. And um, I look forward to um, looking at independent essays uh, next week and to see your examples and to can you giving you feedback on mistakes and how to organize your essay. So thank you very much. Have a good day, good evening, and a good week. Take care.